Imagine getting up every day full of energy as if you were in your 20s again. What would that be like? What would it be worth to you? What is your health worth to you? Think about it. Your health isn't everything, but without it, everything else is nothing. And yet, too many of us are taking it for granted until something goes wrong. And no one wakes up hoping to be diagnosed with a disease or chronic illness. And yet, we've never been taught how to be proactive in our health through our school or public health. As a registered health coach and integrative health practitioner, I believe it's time this information is made available to everyone. Combining new knowledge around your health and the ability to do my functional medicine lab tests in the comfort of your own home will allow you to optimize your health for today and all your tomorrows. Don't wait for your wake up call. Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call podcast. My name is Melissa Dealey and I am your host. And this episode is a continuation of episode number 60, two episodes ago, as I continue to focus on the theme of inspiration. And so if you haven't listened to episode 60, I suggest you go back and listen to episode 60 first. And then listen to episode 61 because, oh my goodness, the story of Tanya Joyce going from wheels to heels is such an incredibly inspirational story. And I know you will absolutely love it. And once you've listened to those two episodes, come back and join me for episode 62 here as we continue with 10 more sources of inspiration in my life and how they impact me. So again, when we are living in a place of inspiration, we are feeling good, joyful, happy, motivated. We're looking towards the future. We're looking at possibility instead of feeling that things are impossible, can't be done, being afraid, being angry, leave behind all of those negative emotions. And we're moving towards the positive emotions, feeling lighter. And so that's why being in a state of inspiration is such a wonderful place to be. And honestly, one of the easiest ways to get there is to simply go out into nature. And I'm very, very fortunate. I am surrounded by nature. But I'm surrounded by nature by a very conscious choice I made about 32 years ago. I came to Whistler, British Columbia, in October of 1990. And when I stood in the village and was surrounded by the mountains, I was in awe of the sheer beauty of Mother Nature. And I spent that winter here and it was my intent to only be here for one winter and then go on to London, England to a career in merchant banking using my commerce degree. And partway through that season, I had many people telling me, oh, you have to stay for summer because summer's amazing here. You can do even more in the summer. You can kayak and you can paddleboard and you can canoe and you can swim in the lakes and you can sail and you can hike and you can bike ride. Whereas winter was skiing or skiing downhill or cross country, but it was still skiing, right? And so I thought, that sounds pretty amazing. I can stay because it was just an internship. I can push that back six months. And so I did. But then as it was coming around to the end of that year, and I should have been going off to my internship, I also realized I know what that life is like ahead of me in London. I've been there. I have friends in banking. I've seen their stressful life, their long days, and then going to the pub at the end of the day and eating crappy fried food and drinking and then going to bed and getting up and doing it all again the next day. And is that what I wanted for my life? Or did I want to be here in this place surrounded by nature with all of this beauty And okay, maybe I won't make as much money as I would have made if I went into merchant banking, but what was more important to me, my money or my health? And even then I wasn't in health and wellness. I had no desire to go into health and wellness at that point. I still knew that my health was important to me and more important to me than money. Because after all, what is your wealth? What's it good for if you don't have your health? right? And so I made a very conscious decision then that I have never, ever regretted.
I made a conscious decision then that I have never, ever regretted choosing nature. And nature truly is inspirational. It lowers our stress the moment that we're in it. We can feel our body calm. And when we look around at everything that nature offers, the variety, you know, the different types of trees, birds, animals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much mountains, lakes, beaches. There's so much variety and it's different every single day. And I'm 32 years later, I still wake up and see the mountains in the winter covered in snow and have a hard time imagining what they look like in summer. And in summer, they're, you know, grass green and beautiful. And I have a hard time imagining what they look like in winter because I love to just be in the moment and enjoy what nature is offering me in that moment in time. Hiking in the woods and leaving, you know, modern day life behind, the stresses and the worries of the world, technology, et cetera, et cetera, and just going out and being. And so in that place in nature, when we lower our stress levels and when we find a place of calm, when our conscious mind can slow down enough, that's where creativity comes in. That's where inspiration happens. We can be inspired to, you know, come up with a new problem, new solution to a problem we're trying to solve, a new plan for what's next in our life. Or we can just be inspired to slow down and enjoy the peace and quiet and the calm because we get those opportunities so rarely in our world today. So I am literally in awe of mother nature every day. Every time I go up the mountain skiing, it's beautiful to me and I just want to take photos and some of my friends laugh at me because they're like you've lived here for 32 years and you look like a tourist and I'm like I don't care I really don't care I want to capture this every time and what's been really interesting over the last 18 months as I've been doing this and sharing this uh, on social and through this pandemic when you know everybody's we've been staying home and doing less etc I post these photos and other people are commenting how just looking at my photos brings them calm or inspires them or they just appreciate seeing them. And then that inspires me to continue posting my photos. And sometimes I think, well, it's kind of the same photo as I posted last time. It doesn't matter because somebody else is going to see it. Somebody who needed to see it on that day. Because Mother Nature has so much to give, whether it's in person or even through a photograph or a picture. And so those of you who know me, you absolutely know I love spending time in nature, whether it's downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, in the summertime, getting out on my paddleboard. I actually don't know how many people I lost count that I inspired to buy paddleboards in my last two summers of paddleboarding and posting about it. And I love that. I love that other people are getting out into nature and enjoying that time on the water and the calm. And it's so healthy. We're letting go of stress in those moments. Hiking, I used to always, you know, I've done a lot of hiking over my years here, but in, since the pandemic, taking out backcountry hiking with my daughter, something the two of us can do together and totally enjoy. Quiet time, memory making, just relaxing, leaving all the devices behind or simply sitting in nature and enjoying the warmth of the sun coming through the trees. Or what I absolutely love is walking through the trees with a canopy above my head and you can't see up to the sky, but then every once in a while the sun will come through and you can see the rays of the sun coming through the trees and hitting the ground ahead of you. It's just absolutely beautiful. And what about the changing of the colors in the fall, the spring, you know, that brilliant bright green of new leaves and buds in the spring to the beautiful oranges and reds of the fall. Yes, I love nature. I could probably do a whole show on nature, but I'm going to move on to the source of inspiration number 12, which is laughter, right? Who doesn't love the sound of laughter? 
think about that baby, that new baby laugh when you're just, you know, going boo at them and they think it's the funniest thing ever. And it's just that really cute little baby giggle. And you can do it over and over and over again. And every time they laugh more, and it's that same little cute baby laugh. We've all seen that, experienced that to, you know, comedy shows, to, you know, comedy television, just allowing us that time to laugh, those belly laughs. A great episode that my family and I love. It's called Miranda. It's out of the out of the UK. There's only three seasons. There's only five or six episodes per season, but it is laugh out loud hilarious to the point where you're laughing so hard your tummy hurts. And that is so healthy for you because one uh, minute of laughter can boost your immune system for 24 hours. One minute of anger or fear or stress, on the other hand, can weaken your immune system for four hours. So what would you rather? Laughter changes your energy. It shifts your mood. It lightens your load. And it's a very quick and powerful way to move into that place of feeling lighter. So I absolutely love laughter for what it does because it makes us feel good. It's contagious. When my oldest daughter starts laughing, she has an absolutely contagious laugh. And I can't help but laugh along with her. And sometimes she's, you know, playing tricks on her dad and laughing at her dad. And then I'm laughing too. And he's like, thanks for the support. And I absolutely can't help it. I just start laughing when she starts laughing. And so that contagious nature of laughter is really powerful as well, because it it brings us together as human beings enjoying the moment. So laughter is yet another source of inspiration. Where can you find laughter in your life? The 13th source of inspiration is spirituality, whether that's meditation, prayer, contemplation, all of these can be a quiet source of peace and inspiration. Sometimes inspiration comes to us when we slow down, right? I said that in my last episode, when my daughter and I were sitting at the sunset and the quiet of the morning, in fact, inspiration often comes to us when we slow down and we just don't slow down enough on a regular basis. But when we choose to slow down and go within, the inspiration can reveal itself to us. The problem solving, the ideas, creative ideas for something we might want to do next. And so what does that look like for you? It doesn't have to be a make work project to slow down or to meditate or to pray. It could be five minutes at a time. And sometimes it's a matter of just starting. And initially it might be five minutes, but then as you get good at meditating for five minutes and you really like the peace and the calm and the inspiration that comes to you, it's easy to build upon that to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. For me, yoga is almost like meditation. That can be a 45 minute to an hour long class of just being calm, being within, closing my eyes to all the external input and the bombardment of what's thrown at our eyes all day, every day, to just allow the brain time to calm. And from that place, we get inspiration. Number 14 are my clients. My clients are an incredible source of inspiration to me. And perhaps for you, it's clients, maybe it's colleagues, maybe it's your bosses, but who are the people that you work with that might be a source of inspiration for you? Very often, the clients that come to work with me have been looking for solutions to their root cause of their health issues for quite some time and not getting answers, being told nothing's wrong with them or that we don't know what's wrong with you, and they're frustrated. And sometimes they've almost given up. They don't think they can heal at all and they have to feel like crap for the rest of their life, which is absolutely not true because your dis-ease does not have to be a life sentence. But sometimes that's what people are led to believe. 
And so when they start working with me, they don't have a lot of hope left. They're thinking, will this work? Won't this work? I'm not sure. They have to buy into my belief that my programs work. And I know my programs work because I've seen them work with hundreds and hundreds of different people and get great results for all of them. And so I have to share how the programs work with them. And then they have to choose to step into that. When we have hope, we can continue the healing journey. It's when we quit that we've lost our hope and nothing happens. So as long as we keep trying, there's the chance that, well, then the body can keep healing, right? So they step into that. And then as we create the environment for their body to heal and they start noticing the benefits very quickly, usually within the first three weeks, now they develop their own belief that, hey, there's something to this. This can work for me. I'm feeling better. I'm on the right path. And they're inspired to keep going and their belief blossoms. And when I see them take on their own belief and I see them step into doing the work, that inspires me because it isn't always easy. But they do it because they start to see the benefits and that inspires them to keep going. And that inspires me to keep doing the work that I'm doing because there's more people out there that need that kind of help and support and guidance on their healing journey. So I wanna say thank you to every single one of my clients that trusted in me because you inspire me every single day and stepping into doing the work that you need to do to help your body heal with my guidance. And you inspire me to keep doing the work that I do. And it brings me great joy because I love seeing the results that people get. So number 15, the 15th um, source of inspiration are our friends. We have all different kinds of friends, friends in different shapes and sizes that all have different skills and different knowledge that we don't have. And so they can do things that we can't do or don't do. And this is inspiring because from there we can learn from each other. And I have a particular very good friend who I've actually only known for the last six months. We're accountability partners in a business coaching group that uh, we're both in. And we both agree that our coach ass assigned us to be partners together. It was just a perfect match. And honestly, this lady is an angel. Recently, she moved into the house of neighbors who had a disabled daughter and a son, and they hadn't had a vacation since the kids were born. And caring for a disabled child, as anybody, any of you would know, if you have disabled children, that's 24 seven. And they'd never had a vacation. And so Jackie, who I've nicknamed an angel, moved into their home, leaving her own teenage son and husband in their family home in order to care for these two kids while their parents got their first ever vacation. Is it easy looking after a disabled child? Absolutely not. This is a disabled teenager. She's, you know, got some weight to her. So Jackie had to be lifting her and, you know, getting, carrying her into bed and bathing her and getting her to eat food and taking her to her brother's Christmas um, concert. And she sent videos of her dancing with this child who was standing in her leg braces and holding her up so she could dance and playing music. And remember in the last episode, episode 60, music was one of the sources of inspiration. And they were dancing to this music and the brilliant smile on this girl's face was absolutely incredible. And the gift that Jackie gave to this family in moving into their home and caring for their children that inspires me to be a better person because to me, she is an angel. And I was watching this as she was sharing videos of her experience thinking, could I do that? 
would I do that? I don't know. But Jackie did it. And now next, you know, if there's a time where I'm asked to do that, I would want to say yes, because Jackie's inspired me to be that better person so that I can say yes to that. So thank you, Jackie, for that inspiration. And then we have affirmations as our 16th source of inspiration. And again, there's many affirmations out there. You can Google them. You can make up your own. And I made up an affirmation that many of you have heard many times over in regard to self-care when I first started my health coaching certification course, because that's where I first learned that self-care is the most selfless act and that we should be looking after ourselves first, not last, because I always thought I had to look after everybody else first and me last. And then I never really got to me. And when I flipped that on its head, it made so much sense. You know, we can't serve from an empty cup, put the oxygen mask on first in the airplane, et cetera, right? Fill your cup until it's overflowing and serve from the saucer. That made so much more sense to me. So I created an affirmation that self-care is the most selfless act as it allows you to show up and give the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. And I say that every single day. As I shifted my habits into looking after me first. And as I did that, I noticed a shift in me. I noticed a shift in my family because I was looking after me first and I was actually more stress resilient. I was actually calmer. Two teenage daughters at the time when I first implemented this and noticed this. And one day I had this aha that they're not riling me up like they used to. I'm not responding and yelling like I used to. They still push my buttons, but I respond calmly. And the only difference was that I had started looking after myself, blocking my self-care time in my calendar, making sure I got my workouts in or my paddle boarding or my skiing or whatever it was. And self-care for every single person is different. For me, it's some form of exercise or it's enjoying a bath at the end of the day or reading a book. For you, it might be totally different. But affirmations really help us to change habits. We're so programmed to just be in our comfort zone and do what we've always done. And it can be hard to get outside of that and to create a new habit because our brain wants to keep us safe in our comfort zone. And anytime we step outside of that and we start doing something differently, it starts sending us messages to pull us back, questioning what we're doing. Why are you doing that? You sure you want to do that? That's hard. This looks different. Is it safe? Why don't you come back over here where I know I can keep you safe? And that's why so often when we're doing something that has us stepping outside our comfort zone, we might even feel butterflies in our stomach, like standing on stage to give a speech, a piano recital, standing at the start line of a marathon because our brain's like, whoa, what's going on here? And it's questioning us and we're feeling a little bit nervous. And when we continue to uh, step in outside of our comfort zone and move forward on that path, those affirmations can help us keep moving forward. So that is a 16th uh, form of inspiration. The 17th is exercise. So when we exercise, we have endorphins moving through our body, we're feeling good, we're better oxygen flow through our body, therefore, you know, and more blood flowing through our body, etc. We just feel better. And I realize if you're used to lying around on the couch, that it might be really hard to find that motivation to get up and exercise. But when you do, you always feel better. I don't think anybody's ever gone and done a workout and then said, oh, gee, I wish I didn't do that. And so it's incredibly inspirational because we're always feeling better. And again, we're getting out of our conscious brain when we're exercising, our brain can calm and, you know, new thoughts, new ideas, new inspirations can come to us. I've recently invested in the mirror by, and Lululemon is 
uh, partnered with the mirror to promote that. And so now I have a whole exercise gym in my living room with over 10,000 workouts in it from chair workouts you can do in your chair to yoga, to stretching, to toning, to bar, Pilates, boxing, kickboxing, Tai Chi, cardio, competition, family fun. Um, I, I can't even remember all of them. There's so many to choose from. And then from beginner to intermediate to advanced to expert and five minutes to 60 minute classes and some live classes and then a whole bunch of recorded classes. So every single day at some point I can go to the mirror and I like to do my workouts in the morning. I can go to the mirror and I can do a half hour of this and a half hour of that, or maybe I do an hour of something, try different things and just enjoy that. And I can play my music, play their music. And again, remember music is another source of inspiration. I'll often play my energy shifting tunes just because they're faster, especially if I'm doing cardio. Oh, dance was another one I forgot to tell you. Then I have to play their music and I'm totally uncoordinated. And you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm at home and no one's watching, but I'm moving and I'm creating that blood flow. I'm getting out of my thinking mind and just being in the moment. And from there, source it, that's the source of inspiration. So I absolutely love my mirror. And but it doesn't matter what exercise do you like to do? Maybe it's just getting out and going for a walk. I told you in the two episodes ago about my mom walking the pole to pole without even knowing it and getting her Fitbit badge because she was out walking her dogs. And then she's getting out and getting close to the beach because she's living in Australia. So she's closer to nature. So all those benefits from getting outside and doing a walk. So what type of exercise do you like? Because that's what's most important. If you like bike riding, then go ride a bike. If you hate bike riding, don't ride a bike. Find something that you like because then you're so much more likely to do it. And you can start off in baby steps, 15 minute increments and build up. And as you build up and you feel better and you feel fitter, you're further inspired to keep going. So number 18 is acts of kindness. I love this one because so often acts of kindness don't actually even have to cost you anything. Think of it if you're just giving someone a compliment. And in this world, how often does that happen? Not often enough to the point where if you do acknowledge someone and give them a compliment they might feel uncomfortable and try to push it off or say it was nothing because they're not used to receiving compliments because we're not giving them often enough and giving a compliment doesn't cost you anything but it gives the other person so much and guess what it's actually giving you something too, because you feel good about giving that compliment to the other person. Any act of kindness leaves you feeling good, whether somebody drops something and you pick it up for them, whether you're opening the door for someone, whether you're buying someone in front of you a coffee and, or behind you a coffee in line just because. Whatever it is, that act of kindness leaves you feeling good. And you've made someone else's day at the same time. And what if all of us could just go out and give five compliments today to five different people, genuine compliments, and notice how you feel as a result of doing that. And notice how you've made each and every one of those people's day. Now, if that isn't a source of inspiration, I don't know what is. Making someone else's day from a simple act of kindness. Number 19, change. Change is a source of inspiration. I've always said the only guarantee in life is change. And yet some people are very resistant to change because they're in that comfort zone where their brain knows they can keep them nice and safe and they don't want to get out of it but there's no growth sitting in your comfort zone. So in order to have growth, we have to get out of that comfort zone. Staying in it all the time simply gets boring. And boredom can actually lead to depression. 
And depression can actually lead to negative health impl implications. And there's no better sign of that than people in retirement. They count down the days to retirement and then retirement starts. And then they have maybe have the whole month, first month planned out. And they're going to travel. And then after that, they have no idea what they're going to do with all of this time. And if they don't make a plan on how they're going to spend that time, it gets boring. And the, that boredom leads to depression and depression leads to illness. And too many people die really soon after retiring. It's actually tragic because you work all of these years of your life looking forward to retirement so you can do all of these things and then it doesn't happen. Which is why I actually believe in the Japanese approach of Ikigai where you find your passion and your purpose and you do that every day for the rest of your life. You don't have to retire from it because you love what you do. And so then retirement isn't even a thing. You might do it less as you get older, but you don't have to actually retire. But if you're living life by design, you can take vacation when you want to take vacation. You can live your purpose when you want to live your purpose. But moving out of our comfort zone and inviting change into our life is inspiring as we don't know where we're going or how it's going to turn out. And that's totally why your brain wants to keep you in the comfort zone, because it's like, where are you going? I don't know if I can keep you safe over there. Let's come back to the comfort zone. But the reality is when we step outside that comfort zone, it's an adventure. And that is inspiring. And we just have to gently tell our brain that it'll be okay that we've got this. And let's go over here and you'll find a new comfort zone later on. You see, your brain is your best friend and your worst enemy at the same time. It's your best friend when it stops you from stepping in front of a bus. But it's your worst enemy when it's holding you hostage in your comfort zone. So learn to talk back to your brain and bring it with you on your adventure out of your comfort zone. And that is inspiring. Let yourself be inspired simply by not knowing what the outcome is going to be, but being open to the journey. And the 20th source of inspiration is a conscious rethink. Slow down, meditate, Take the time for check-ins with yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you in alignment in all aspects of your life? Is there anything you need to shift in order to get into alignment? Because when you're in alignment in all aspects of your life, you will find yourself living in peace, harmony, and joy. And there will always be room for growth. There will be always room to try new things. And that is a great source of inspiration. When we rethink, when we do check-ins with ourselves, check that we're on the right path. And if we're not, we do a little zig here, a little zag there. So I hope you've really enjoyed these over the course of two episodes, these 20 sources of inspiration. And I truly would love to hear from you, whether you email me at melissa at yourguidedhealthjourney.com um, post a message on YouTube underneath these uh, podcasts or send me a message through my website at yourguidedhealthjourney.com through the contact form and let me know which of these 20 sources of inspiration most resonated with you. When we take the time to just stop and think about all the ways that we can be inspired in our life, we can truly start to create a little bit of change. We can start to realize where boredom's setting in, where we're bogged down, when we're just doing same old, same old, and we can shake it up. And that is inspiring. So thank you for listening to the Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call podcast. And next week, I have yet another fabulous guest. And this particular guest has had two near-death experiences. And clearly her work isn't done on this planet because she's here to share her story with you. Amazing woman, so inspirational. So come back next week and listen to episode number 63.